Hello everyone, I'm at the uh, range today. I'm actually in the gym inside uh, uh, my private range. And uh, I wanted to talk to everybody a little bit about the national debt, okay? Now, um, aside from being a firearms instructor, I'm also an accountant. Um, so I have a pretty good understanding of uh, economics and uh, you know, tax returns. Um, and and you know, I've also looked into the national debt. Um, now, accounting doesn't necessarily have anything to do with national debt, um, but but uh, you know, I'm able to look into it and, and get information about it more easily than you know people who are not accountants. And um, more importantly, I'm able to uh, uh, to to, tra you know, to transfer that information to people. You know, I'm able to because uh, you know a lot of times people come to me, uh, you know, you know, business owners, and I do the corporate tax returns, and I gotta basically, you know take these complicated uh, tax codes and, and explain it to, to, to people in such a way so that they understand it. So the same thing here with the national debt. So let's talk about uh, the national debt. Uh, I think it's something like $13 trillion right now. Um, now, $13 trillion is pretty much an imaginary number, okay? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really exist. Um, and, and here's one way to look at it. If you think of one million seconds, okay? One million seconds is approximately seven days, okay? Um, one billion seconds is 31 years, okay? One trillion seconds is 31,000 years, okay? So that's all, you know, the number trillion is, is, is basically a computer-generated number, okay? Unless you're talking molecules or grains of sand, uh, it, it's not a number that exists, okay? So, so the only way that it can, it can reference money in any way is because it only exists in a computer that's, you know, you know compounding this interest at, uh, uh, at, at, you know, astronomical rates, okay? So before we really get into the national debt, we first have to understand what money is, okay? Um, and if, if you pull out a dollar bill and you look at it, okay, you know, right at the top it says Federal Reserve Note, okay, so a note is basically a payable, okay, so, so basically, you know, the, uh, if you have a dollar bill in your pocket, it doesn't, you don't really have a dollar bill, what that really means is that the federal government owes you a dollar, okay, so one of the key things to understand about our monetary system, right, our monetary system is based on debt, okay, that's, that's, um, that's what it is, it's a debt system, okay, uh, our money is created by debt. Okay. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, maybe we should uh, go back to a gold standard. Okay. Well, a couple of issues with the gold standard. Number one, okay, what you're really talking about there's not, you know, when you say a gold standard, what you're really talking about is an asset-based standard. Okay. Um, so you want something that's tied to a valuable asset when you say a gold standard. Uh, now, there's, there's two problems with that. Number one, unless you own a gold mine, okay, you have no control over the, the gold, okay? And whoever does control the gold mine, uh, they're in a position to manipulate the supply and demand of that gold and also the price, okay? So, so, so if you go to a gold standard, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're in control of that uh, any more than you are the current monetary system, okay? So, so that's, that's the first issue with trying to go to some type of gold standard. Um, the second issue with going to a gold standard is that it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? So, so, so you know, and, and, and thirdly, you know, you don't have the ability to go and, and check on the government or whoever's holding this gold to make sure that whatever ratio of gold to money they're supposed to be holding, that they're actually holding that. So, so those are some issues with having a gold standard. Now the current system that we have um, is actually an asset-based system. It's just, it's just not a gold-based system. Um, and it's actually a better system because the way we make money today, okay, because it's not just the government, government that makes money, we make money too, okay? We make money at our local uh, banks. The way it works is when you go to get a loan, okay, let's simplify this, let's say you own a house and you own the house outright, okay, and you want to basically, you want to get some credit against your house, all right? So you're putting, you go to the bank and you say, hey, I want to borrow, let's say, $100,000, and I have a house that I'm putting up as collateral, okay? 
So basically what you're doing is you're handing over uh, the title of your house to the bank, okay? And the bank gives you uh, basically some type of credit, okay? Um, so you're, instead of giving the bank gold, you're giving them something even more valuable, your house or your car or whatever asset you're actually putting up, okay? Because you know, the value of gold, you know, is debatable. I mean, you, I mean, what can you do with gold? I mean, you can't eat it. You can't, you know, you know, you can't put it over your head, and, and, and it can't shelter you from rain or from cold. Okay, the house or the car is actually a real asset that you're putting up as collateral. Um, and what happens is the bank, you know, actually goes into the computer, and they, you know, if they value the house at let's say a hundred thousand dollars, they're actually creating money. Okay, that money did not exist until you handed them over. Um, you know, you handed it over to them the title, okay? Uh, so they're creating new money every time they, you know, you give them an, an, an asset, okay? Now what happens? Um, you gave them a house that, let's say, is $100,000, right? And let's say over, you know, they give you a 30-year, you know, you get to pay them back over 30 years, okay? Well, over 30 years, you're not going to pay them back $100,000. You're going to pay them back $300,000, right, with the interest, Okay? So, so you borrowed hundred thousand dollars, and they created that money, okay? But you got to pay them back three hundred thousand dollars. So somehow there's an extra two hundred thousand dollars that you got to now pay them back, which does not exist, okay? They didn't create it. Now, what you want to do is basically multiply this throughout the whole economy, okay? The whole worldwide economy, for that matter, okay? Everybody that's out there uh, and that's um, you know getting loans to buy their houses, okay? You know, all these people, they, they're getting money that the bank, you know, says is equal to the value of the house, but they all got to pay back two or three times that, and none of that money exists, okay? So, right there's the answer to the question of why does money have any value, okay? You know, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the answer in grade school is, oh, because everybody thinks it has, uh, it's worth something, and that's not the correct answer, okay? Money's not worth something because everybody thinks it's worth something. Money is worth something because you always have to pay back more than you have, okay? I mean, that's what's built into our system. That's what, why our system, why our monetary system basically works. Because uh, when money is created, it's created through debt, okay? And we all have to pay back two and three times whatever we borrow, okay? Um, and and a, a, another way to visualize this is, let's say I was the, old, you know, I was the sole manufacturer of ammunition, okay? I'm the only one that can make cartridges, okay? Uh, and I'm just gonna call them bullets, just to you know, make this conversation a little easier. Okay, so, so basically I'm the only guy that can make bullets, okay? And, and sell them, okay? I'm, I'm the only person that has the components, I'm the only person that has the gunpowder, I'm the only person that has the primers. I'm the sole person that's able to, you know, to, to, to provide bullets to the world, okay? So you come to me and you say, hey, I wanna, I wanna, you know, I wanna borrow 10 bullets from you because I don't have 10 bullets. So I say, fine, here's 10 bullets, okay? Next week, you gotta pay me back 20 bullets, okay? The problem there is that, okay, you take those 10 bullets, you go and you shoot them, right? The following week, you owe me 20 bullets now, okay? So where are you gonna get those 20 bullets to pay me back? Well, I'm the only, I'm the only person that has that supply. So you come back to me and say, listen, can I borrow 20 bullets from you because I gotta pay you back, basically, okay? So I say, sure, sure, I'll, here's 20 bullets I'm gonna lend to you. Uh, only thing is that next week you got to give me back 40 bullets. So you, so you take 20 bullets next week, you got to now pay me back 40 bullets. Well, what do you think is going to happen next week? I'm going to say, fine, now you owe me 80 bullets, okay? And the number keeps going up and up and up and up and up. So that's how, you know, that's why we got this crazy national debt, because that's how, how debt works. Now, here's the thing. Um, all of us are capable of creating money, okay, at our local banks, okay, because remember, like I said, all these local branches, the, the, the bank at your corner, okay, they're able to make money, okay, as long as you have assets to provide to them, uh, that they will take as collateral, they're able to create new money. Um, all of us are limited as to how much money we can create by what the number of assets that we have, okay, because you cannot keep creating money indefinitely because, you know, okay, so you've got a house that's worth $100,000, you've got a car that's worth $20,000 or whatever, okay, so the total money that you can, you know, that you can make is, in that case, $120,000, okay, so, so, so we're all limited as to how much money we can make because we have to put up 
uh, collateral, asset collateral. Okay? The federal government, on the other hand, does not have that limitation. Okay? Instead, when the federal government wants to, um, wants to borrow money, they basically uh, they issue a, a, a note. They're basically, they're, they're basically giving themselves an IOU. Okay? Because it's basically, in reality, you know, the, 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 the Federal Reserve Bank is pretty much the government. Okay? Um, they're, they're tied that clo you know they're, they're tied closely enough together that they might as well be the same. Okay? So so when the government goes to borrow money, um, what the mo government does instead of putting up assets, okay, uh, you know they're actually issuing debt. They're saying, yeah, listen, I'm gonna you know borrow the, whatever five hundred billion dollars and I'm gonna pay myself back at some point. So so they can keep doing this because they don't have to actually put up real assets. The only thing that kind of limits the federal government, the, the yeah, the government from, from from as far as how much money they can they can create is this debt ceiling. Okay, so this is uh, you know an artificial um, uh, you know means that they created to, to, to kind of control how much money the government is going to keep borrowing and creating. Because basically, what they're doing is they're really you know they're really printing money. That's what they were, you know, they're electronically printing money. Um, and, they're, and they're printing it by, by uh, you know, issuing additional debt, you know, which is basically nothing more than an IOU to themselves. Um, and, and that's how this money keeps multiplying and multiplying, you know, as far as the amount of money that, that, that they got to pay back to themselves. Okay? Um, so this system would work fine if, if everybody, including the government, had to actually put up debt in order to create money. Okay? See, or if let's say that the government was somehow working, if they had their own separate monetary system that didn't, you know, interfere with ours, you know, that that might work as well. But the problem is that we're both the government and the people we're all working under the same monetary system. So what's happening is every time the government goes and and creates money, they're basically diluting the money that we have. Okay. Um, so so that's that's how the system works. It's a debt based system. You know. It's it's asset backed as far as the people are because there's a limit to how much money we can we can print up because basically when like I said when we go to the bank and we borrow and we borrow money the bank is basically printing money up for us okay uh, the, the federal government is not limited as to how much money they can print or create except for that debt ceiling which they keep raising and raising and raising and raising um, you know and 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 the, and, and the problem that that creates is as the government keeps printing and printing more money, it dilutes the money that we have and it dilutes the, the, our, the buying power of our money. Um, and essentially that's a tax because uh, by the government printing more money or creating more money, uh, they're diluting the value of our, the buying power of our money. Um, and anytime basically the government's uh, reducing our buying power, they're essentially they're taxing us. Okay? Um, so that's, that's really how our monetary system works. Um, I hope this was, you know, informative for you guys. If you got any questions, by all means, you know, uh, you know, uh, post some comments. Uh, I look forward to hearing you from you. Uh, thanks for watching.